Well, uh, as we go into our sermon, I'd like to like uh, to read us scripture. And today's uh, sermon is based on a very, very popular scripture that many of you have heard. Um, but uh, Pastor Vic is going to bring us for his perspective on it, and that is Psalm twenty-three, not Psalms, because it's not plural, <laughs> but Psalm twenty-three. This is the King James version, and it goes this way: The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Pastor Amigo, it's all yours. Wow. I, amen. I don't know if the Spirit was leading you to slow down in verse six, but I was reading along with you, and I slowed down in verse six because it's such a lovely thought. Psalm 23 is a poem. And uh, what I usually like to work with is I usually like to work with narratives, like uh, historical stories, so I can put some kind of um, understanding on what's happening in the culture then, what, what might be uh, happening with the people, what they might look like. But this is a poem. And this poem really doesn't um, seek to give you like a lot of history points to, to latch on to. Of course, you can, as a uh, historical buff, you, you can go find out how shepherds led their sheep and what that might mean, like, especially when it says, leadeth me. All those things are very clever. But um, poetry for me is, it's, it's only a new thing that I've really become to uh, appreciate. I remember a uh, young guy named uh, Landry. He was a, he's a friend. And he left his job to do art. So when he went to do art, I remember one of, looking at one of his pieces from his art show, and it was, it was clever, but I really wasn't getting it all that much, and I felt bad asking him this, but because he was a personal friend, I felt safe to ask him how to understand art, because me looking at art, I'm like, I don't know. So I remember sitting there, I, I asked him, I said, hey, hey Landry, man, um, how, how should I look at art. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't get it. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I look at your art. Okay. I, I don't get it. And he says to me, he says, well, have you ever looked at a piece of art and, and it kind of, uh, you had an emotional reaction to it? I said, um, nope. And he said, well, when you do, that's how you can appreciate art. So uh, when you have kind of this emotional connection to it, Everybody appreciates art differently. So you don't have to like it like I do, and I don't have to like it like you do. And I remember um, years later, I was working with my children, and I was homeschooling them, and I was reading to them uh, their art lesson. And the art lesson that day was talking about an artist, a, an abstract artist named uh, Piet, Piet Mondrian, or Pierre Mondrian. And um, he, he was from like the early 19th century or early 20th century. And he was doing abstract art. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's, that's pretty clever as I kept reading. And when I kept reading, I discovered that one of the things he did is he, he kept evolving in his artwork. He moved over to like primary colors. And around 1930, he made this piece called Composition of Yellow, Red, and Blue or a composition of red, blue, and yellow. And what he did is he used colors a certain way such that they had a value of weight. So yellow, it's a light color, so it doesn't weigh very much. Blue, it's a darker color, so it weighs more. And I, I, that was such a neat concept. Then he used these lines, horizontal, vertical lines, to show weight and symmetry. And then he put these three colors, just three colors on a, on a, on a piece of art. And I remember looking at it going, I get it. I get it. I was so excited. It was so cool. I finally got some art. And I remember feeling really good about it. And then I flipped the page in my kid's book. 
And there's this piece of art, his, his later piece, um, when he moved to New York, it, it was called uh, Boogie Woogie. It's like 1942. And I remember right when I flipped the page, I just started laughing. And Landry's story came straight back to me. Whatever kind of emotional reaction you have to that art, then that art, you know, that, that's your, that's your interaction to that art. So if you get a chance, Piet Mondrian, um, composition of red, blue, yellow, uh, cubism, he's, he, he had some, um, some work in there. It's really great stuff. I'm not a big art consumer, but his work, I really, really like. Probably that's why I'm trying to stand next to something with some texture here. I remember um, uh, my, my daughter uh, just sent me a text, what was it, yesterday? And she sent me a poem, like uh, Psalm 23. But her poem was a bit more familiar. She said, roses are red, violets are blue. No, violets are not blue, they're violet, get it right. And I was like, oh, thanks, thanks a lot. And she was like, get it right, get a clue. But, but I, 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 had, I had a laugh. So what I, what I like is that she is trying to, um, she's doing a lot of creative writing and she's also playing with some poetry. I remember I didn't have a really good um, appreciation for poetry. I'm not sure that I still do, but, but I'm appreciating it a lot more. So as I think about Psalm 23, I think about how to interact with it. I remember I was riding a ferry. Now over here in Washington, in the Seattle Puget Sound area, it's really cool because you can ride on ferries and ride on water. And I remember I was with, there with a friend and uh, we were riding across the water and in the distance on the water, there was a sunset. And she was telling me about how she used to lead youth people in a camp, like a wilderness retreat. And she said, every time at sunset, as an introduction to the young people, she would quote to them this poem. And I was like, okay. So I got myself ready. I looked at the sunset. I said, go. And then she quoted, uh, what's his name? Uh, W.B. Yeats. And I got it right here, but I'll try to quote it to you by memory. Uh, she said, uh, had I the embroidered clods of heaven um, and wrought with golden and silver light, the blue, the dim, and the dark clods of night light and half light, I would spread the clods under your feet. But I, being poor, have only my dreams. I spread my dreams under your feet. Uh, tread softly for you tread on my dreams. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, how deep was that? That was my first real like, whoa, poetry is cool. Now I, I've taken poetry uh, in class, I've, I've read prose, I've taken art appreciation, but that moment was so memorable to me. And after that, I, I decided to commit it to memory so that I can impress people. Um, guess what? I, it doesn't impress anybody. <laughs> I'm so corny. Um, uh, not long ago, I was reading a book by Ken Molzak called Praying with Power, Moving Mountains. And it's in his book that brought the poem of Psalm 23 really, really close to me. Um, Psalm 23 before his book was something that I remember from scary movies. Uh, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. But can Dr. Mozak's um, uh, way to help me understand it really just blew my mind. So that's what I want to share with you today. So Sergio read to you the psalm. It's, it's real familiar. So I'm going to kind of go through it a little bit quick. And hopefully we can get some application, right? So the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That is the place where God wants you. God wants you in a position of not wanting. Okay, so not completely like you have no desire, but you're not in a place of constant want. You, you are in a place where the Lord is taking care of you and you know that. Um, and that's the place that he wants you, in a place of not wanting, always wanting. Um, verse two says this, and or rather, how does he get you in the place of not wanting? Verse two says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his sake. Now, when I first looked at this text, it's, it's, um, it's familiar. It's nice. He leads me. He puts me in a place of peace. He puts me in a place where the waters don't scare me. Like, like you know, if, if you read about sheep, you'll, you'll see that the more placid the water, the, the more calm the sheep. Um, and then it says that he restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, in Dr. Mozak's book, what he highlights is the word leadeth. Now, that, that's super important. So he leadeth me. He leadeth me beside the still water. He leadeth me in the paths. What that does is it puts God in a certain uh, position, preposition. So, like, for example, we, or me, I have always known and imagined God on a throne, right? So he's way up there, the man upstairs, on a throne. And there are certain theologies, you know, he, God came down here, created the world, and then disappeared, and he just watches it from up there. But this kind of does something different. The Bible says he leads. In other words, God is not just up and ethereal. God is in front of you. He leads you. He leads you into a place where you can be at peace. So when the scripture says um, uh, that you shall not want, the first thing that is is great to notice, at least for today, is that God is not just simply up there. He is leading you in front of you. The verse four says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. That is, for me, the one that has so much rich meaning. Verse five says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, the part that I really, really want you to, 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 to listen to right here, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And then the Bible says, for thou art with me. Now, um, here, here it is. In verses two and three, it says that he leadeth me beside still water. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. That's in front. Now the Bible says, um, when you are walking through the valley that is uh, a shadow, darkness, and I think this, this verse might be familiar enough to you uh, such that almost, almost every show that I've seen that talks about death and then there's kind of a funeral scene, somebody is, is going to read this verse. And so it's a very dark thing, right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no e- evil. He is not leading anymore. The scripture says that thou art with me. So um, instead of leading, now he's with you, right? So not leading, but with you. So God is not just upstairs. God now, according to verses two and three, he leads you. Now verses four and five says that he is with you. And, and, and the with you is, is a great thing because the scripture says that when he's with you, that's when there is the shadow of death and it's super dark and it's super lonely it's super scary and it's just you know i i I don't know i i don't want to be led through there i want to be to have god with me while i'm in there and then verse five is it's just a great verse it says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies boy this is the verse i kind of play in my head you know with somebody when somebody does something to a brother, I'm like, Psh, just wait. Uh, there will be a table before you <laughs> that the Lord will prepare for me. Uh, you can join me, but I, I hope at that time we're not enemies because um, the Lord's going to be with me. Um, Lord's not only up. He's not only in front leading. He's beside you. And then verse six, that was the verse that when I was reading along with Sergio, it said, surely goodness and mercy. Now, um, just in case you're quoting this in your head or looking at it online or in your paper Bible, um, look at this. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall, and the next words are, shall follow me 
all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The, the place that I want you to see the Lord at now, the scripture says, he follows you. That is not um, up there. That is not in front of you leading. That is not thou art with me be, um, beside me. That is now God moving to follow you. And, and it's such a beautiful thing because now it says, goodness, mercy follows you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So wh what I want to do today is, um, th this is a time of COVID, right? We, we just finished the election cycle. Um, for, uh, for a good part of the country, I think it's like 34% of the country, 34, 40% of the country, it is not finished. It's like, it's still a thing. It's uh, most, most, most people, the majority of the country has said that we have a new president elect. Um, and then there's a large portion that says, we do not have a president elect. And guess what? We have nothing but confusion, Lord, Lead me in this. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're in a place right now where we're experiencing COVID, we're experiencing uh, uncertainty, we're experiencing so many different things. And if there was ever a time that the Lord, it would be good to have the Lord not only on his throne, but also in a place of leading this 2020 coming into January 2021 would be a good thing, Lord, please lead me. Lead me what? Beside still waters. Lead me what? In paths of righteousness, because that's what I need. That's probably what more than just me needing. And then um, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving that just passed. So uh, we are, uh, we will be on a, because we're recording this earlier than Thanksgiving, uh, we, we are planning to be on a conference call. Um, one group where they're doing Zoom, another group we're doing Google Duel, and I'm sure there are people that are using other pieces of software. So this is crazy. You know, I am not used to um, getting on a conference call. I did it years and years ago when Skype first came out because I was in another country and all we did was just put the camera in the kitchen and we just, you know, talked and stuff. But now it's kind of like government led and, and all of us are trying to make sure that we protect each other. And now what we're doing is the people that are alone are being asked to stay alone. The people that look forward to visiting with families are being asked to not visit with families. And, I, and, and um, even though I am not the most social person, I know enough to know that when we miss being around people, that is not fun. In fact, that could be like, like Sergio was saying, he's an extrovert. I imagine that if he ever had a week where he had to be by himself and a mirror, that uh, the mayor was only his company, probably wouldn't be a good week. Um, so when I look at scripture and it says that uh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's a dark place. And you know, when places are dark, um, I don't really want to be led. I want comfort. I want company. I want presence. And so when I think about Thanksgiving and all the presents, not present as in a box with a gift, but presents as in someone being next to me, with me, beside me, scripture says that God has not only moved from the throne and in front to lead me, but God is also, he's also with me. That's, so when times are dark, he's with me. And, and when all I can think of is, Everything's going bad for me. All my enemies in front of me. The Bible says that he will prepare a table in front of them and be with me. And then uh, we get to verse six, which is such a lovely verse. Not only is God up in front, beside, but now he is 
verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That's behind me, supporting me. After I get into a place of where the Lord uh, is next to me and comforts me, um, then if I'm strong enough, the Lord will move behind me and support me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For, for all of us that are right now going through some COVID, Thanksgiving, difficult times, I want you to know that the Lord not only sits on a throne, not only moves in front when you need leaving, not only uh, stands and, and is with you when, when, when things are dark, but it's also behind you. Um, I, I, I remember, uh, let's see, this is 2020, 2015, super dark time in my life. And, and I remember that I was like in my place at home, I was doing nothing more than being in the dark and staring at the carpet. And I was really in a bad place and I really needed some leading in my life. And I remember just, I don't even think I was praying, but people were calling me, telling me they were praying for me. And that was the Lord telling me, hey, man, I'm sending people to lead you out of this place. And I remember my friend would call me, different friends, and they would say, hey, man, come over to our house. Just hang out. We don't have to talk about anything. Just eat. You can leave whenever you want. We don't have to say anything. And I would, I would say to them, dude, I, I know that I don't want to go, but every time I go, I feel better. Thank God he led me through people. And also during that dark time, oh my goodness, man. Um, I would be with people, but some people I connected to best than better than other people. And there are too many people in my life for me to uh, start listening name by name. But I, I wanna say to you, um, you guys know who you are and there are others that you went out of your way to be with me when I was at my lowest. Um, when I really felt like I was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And I want you to know that God does that not only for me, but does that for all of us. Puts people in our life to, um, to be with us. Thou art with me. And then I remember it took about two years after that super dark time, uh, two years of mingling with people. And then um, after that, man, um, I remember finally going to church or actually just being in the presence of others where I just felt like it's okay now. And I really feel like that's when verse six applies. That that's when sh surely goodness and mercy followed me and supported me. And it was as if the Lord was saying, go on, my son, I got you now, you're all right. And then I could say something like what David said, and I shall, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's my prayer for you, that God moves from the throne to leading, to beside, to behind you and support you. Wherever you need God, you need him to lead, that's my prayer for you. You need him beside you. That's my prayer for you. You need him supporting you. Uh, that's my prayer for you. Now I'm going to bring in uh, Sergio. Um, and Sergio, that is a piece of word on Psalm 23. Thank you so much for reading the King James Version. You did an excellent job. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. All right, in my household, old school Adventist, it was only the King James Version. None of this <laughs> other voodoo translations, just the King James. So I have many years of King James. Uh, one of the first Bibles I bought myself was King James Version. Now, of course, I Absolutely. read... Absolutely. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's Talk about poetry. It's, you know, King James got its issues, but the, the writing is beautiful. And um, there's just, you know, hearing it just in different translations in general, it just as an enlightening uh, to, in many ways. Um, but thank you, uh, Pastor Mika, uh, for Psalms 23. And, and as, as you mentioned, this is a very famous verse. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. almost, um, you know, when something's overused, it kind of loses its kind of power. Right. It kind of loses its, right. its, its uh, anyways, its weight. 
Um, but I just love how, how you spoke about it to, to bring it back to, to, to the, the, all, the, just the eternal beauty of scripture and, and what it can mean when it's really paid attention to and really absorbed. And so I just, just really appreciate that. Um, and I do have a few comments. As you were talking, um, the thing with art was cracking me up because uh, I'm a big fan of comedy. For those of you who know me, a lot of stand-up comedians. <laughs> and, uh, and there's this one bit that Brian Reagan has how he talks about, I don't understand art. He goes, but if I were to be the one criti- uh, critiquing art, everybody would be getting bad scores. He's like, why is Picasso putting the same eyes, you know, the two eyes on the same side of the face? He would get a low score <laughs> in my book. I was just cracking up. Like, when you don't understand art, you're like, I don't, I don't know what this is. I know. <laughs> it's a I, bunch of it, chicken it, scratch. <laughs> so, so that's the crazy thing. I have seen so many different pieces of art, like abstract art. I don't get it. But Mondrian, oh, my goodness. I... I, I love it. I, I really do. In cubism, I love it now. And or what made, a lot of it, rather. You know, what I was thinking about that, just your story about that is like, that's kind of, sometimes it's a little bit like scripture. I was just in, right. in, a, in a small group and we we're talking about how we can reread scripture, even stuff we've already read, but then sometimes a light goes on or you just mm. understand it more. The, the spirit speaks to you. And there's so many reasons for that. I, I know I've read scripture when I was a kid that, I didn't understand it, you know, like, but then the, you know, that when you get it, when you're like, Oh, now I understand just that joy or that, you know, just that opening, just the whole world just opened up to you. And just that made me think about that in scripture that I guess my, my, my word on that is don't give up on scripture. You know, sometimes mm. when you read scripture, like, I don't understand this. I like the phrase, I don't understand this yet. Maybe someday right. I will. You know, I understood scripture one way before I had kids. I understood scripture different way after I had kids, before I was married, (laughs) after I was married. Like, you know, like being in my 20s compared to my 40s, you know, like you maybe just don't understand it yet, but don't give up on it. Just keep at it. You know, there's so much richness and there's so much to be offered there in scripture that I just think it's it's something we can always return to. Um, There's a... A, a big question I think that I have that I'm, I'm not sure there's an answer to it, but I just want to discuss it. Just, you know, it's, it's COVID and, and, and it's, it's harder on some than others. I think we all struggle mm-hmm. with it regardless of whether mm-hmm. we're, we're afraid or we're not, or we think it's all a conspiracy. One, one way or the other, doesn't matter where your opinions are, we're struggling with it because we have to, it's, 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 it's the right. world that's happening in the very first verse the right. um where it I says shall not, i shall not want that phrase as you mentioned right to not want in the sense as you said it doesn't mean that god says you i don't want you to have any desires that's that's like that's a different religion <laughs> where you shouldn't have any <laughs> desires and therefore right. life will be great this is that you don't need anything right like like you you i i got you so you don't you don't you don't have any more wants because i've taken care of you when i hear that what i hear in my head is that that requires complete trust it requires complete trust in god because you he's taking care of everything so you're trusting that god is taking care of you taking care of you doesn't mean that you don't have troubles right god taking care of you shall not want meaning you completely trust that he's got you regardless mm-hmm. of what's happening yeah and, you know the bible says the lord is my shepherd Mm -hmm. So um, the idea is the Lord. And Mm -hmm. if, if God or Jesus or uh, the divinity itself, if that is your Lord, then that means that is a person that, or that is the deity, the entity that is, is, is like taking care of you and taking care of your life, like, by giving your life guidance. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like a king, like, right, God is king. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. a king, if we were in a kingdom, the king is what protects the land. They're the ones that keep the kingdom going. You know, they're the ones that they, they manage essentially the entire kingdom. And as long as you have a good right. king, you're, you're good. You know, it doesn't mean you yeah. won't go to war. It doesn't mean there won't be a famine. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean bad things won't happen. What it means is that you right. have somebody who's looking out for you and having your best interest in mind. Uh, right. And then in Psalm 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. So Amen. you have the idea of the Lord and you have the idea of a caretaker. So mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. 
And then that's when David says, I shall not want. So I am tracking you absolutely with that. So that brings, that raises a question. Well, some of us got some trust issues. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so the way I see this text is you are absolutely right. I have trust issues. Um, and I do not see this text as a graduate, right? Like, first of all, you, the Lord becomes your leader, your savior, and then the Lord leads, and then the Lord's beside, and then the Lord's behind. I see this as uh, just the idea that God moves. And whether God is leading, whether he's be supporting you, whether he's uh, next to you, the, the idea that I want to take away from this text is not that there is um, God behind you and supporting you and goodness and mercy following you. It is not like you graduated to that level mm -hmm. and now you won't fall back. Your level six um, of Adventism. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it, there. There is not that thing. This is um, this is cyclical. I mean, th this is you. You could have the Lord lead, um, and then all of a sudden you realize, whoa, uh, I still need more leading, or I need mm -hmm. more support, or I need more presence. Um, all of those things are needed, and so God doesn't move in a specific order, but God moves according to your need and my mm. need. Amen. I, I think that's a, that's a great point because where the, I would say, because of this is the most experience that I have, U.S. culture is very prescriptive when it comes to Christianity. Do this, mm. do this, do this, do this, and get to this, right? Like uh, uh, we, we just, we've structured religion almost that way, you know, get baptized first and then do that, you know, like, so there's a lot of prescription traditionally we just put into Christianity. But when you read scripture, some of those prescriptions fall apart because there's certain things and stories in scripture like, wait a minute, but they didn't even, they didn't, they didn't even know this thing that this other person knew. And they did this before they even really understood what God was doing, you know, like, so prescriptions work in some cases, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but, but God is, is, is huge. And, and, and scripture shows you that. Um, and it's great to, to know because then, then you don't have that sense of like, am I doing it right? Am I, I'm failing at this, so I'm never going to get to this spot, you know, so God's never going to really accept me because I didn't do yeah. this. And, you know, that kind of breaks all that down that there's, right. you know, the, John 3, 16 is pretty, pretty straightforward, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for God to love the you world, know, he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe in him, meaning he's believe. Lord, <laughs> believe, right. you know, believe, but uh, believe he's Lord, not just yes. oh, I believe God exists. It's believe he's Lord, meaning has some form of authority over your life as he does here as being a shepherd. That's, that's Amen. really, Amen. that's really where you got to be. Uh, you know, last week I spoke on second Kings 13. It was the last advice of Elisha to the king. Uh -huh. Right. And one of the uh, uh, requests of the prophet to the king was to shoot the arrows that he had into the ground. Right. And the king stopped. So there's mm -hmm. this big lesson of why did you stop? Don't ever mm -hmm. stop. Continue in faith. And somebody wrote in the comment. So we had this big conversation afterwards. Someone wrote in the comment, you know, at least the king had arrows. Mm. And so we, we took a lot of time to discuss that. And, and, and one of the main thoughts was at least the king had faith. At least we have faith. Like, like I think that if, if we ever get to a place where we feel like um, I don't have enough faith to know that the Lord is leading. Like, I don't have the arrows. Um, here's a crazy thing. In my super dark time, 2014, 15, um, I didn't have enough strength in me to pray. Mm. But God looked after such that people came into my life. Mm -hmm. um, one really recommended me to go and, and meet with this group of people for like a self-help kind of a weekend. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, other people came in and just brought me to their house, fed me, and let me go. Uh, that wasn't, I don't know that I would classify that as my faith acting. I felt like where I fell, uh, people made up the difference. And mm -hmm. God, like, put people in my path. So Amen. for those of us that are really struggling and even having a hard time knowing that the Lord is Lord, um, if you have confessed Jesus as Lord, or even in your struggle, Lord, help me in my unbelief, 
I believe, and I have testimony, and I know testimony of many, many people more, that the Lord will put people in your life mm -hmm. to do the leading, to do the supporting, to do the celebrating, to do the following. Amen. And, and you find that in scripture. You find it when Jethro mm -hmm. comes to Moses, you know, in the middle of the mm -hmm. desert when he's trying to judge He's trying to be the judge of everybody and, and he can't do it. He doesn't know how to delegate. So Jethro comes out of nowhere. <laughs> His uncle is like, yo, you're going to kill yourself and everybody here. Yeah. And he gives he, him some he, good advice, right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, you're not that deep, man. Yeah. Let, yeah. They don't, let, <laughs> says, yeah. I'm sure everybody likes you, but you ain't that deep. <laughs> right. Give the work to somebody else. Right. So helped him out. Uh, David, King David, when he's running and uh, he's starving to death and he shows up at the, at the temple and, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and he, he wants to eat the showbread, you know, the showbread, which is only the priest could eat and all that kind of stuff. And the priest breaks mm -hmm. the temple law and feeds King David, you know, right. in, in, in going. So it, you see this, this in scripture that, 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 that God sends people or, or, or where you show up, you know, he's, he's, he's continually going after you, you know, work, working to, to help you. And, and I think that's, that's one of my, my last comments of just how God, just the, the notion that God works through people. As you say, in your Amen. unbelief, you know, maybe you're lacking in faith, but God is sending you people. So I think there's two things there that, that, I, that I want to point out. One, that means we should, when we say, when in the Bible says, seek me, seek God, mm -hmm. it's not always going to come in a voice from heaven or in mm. stars or in an angel's going to show up. Sometimes it's going to come from that call or that text or that, that the, the fellow sister or brother in Christ in your church who says, how are you doing? You know, that's God right. sometimes reaching out to you. We, we need to be sensitive to that um, as people. When we're hurting, it's, it's really hard to make sense of anything. You know, Ooh, uh, my you know? Goodness. and so it's like, it's not like you're really thinking straight. But I would say that if you're not hurting right now, pay attention that when the time comes, be sensitive to those who are around you who are trying to reach out to you, who are yeah. trying to, to, to just be beside you. That God is answering a prayer that you haven't even prayed potentially yet. Um, yeah. And then the second, the, the other side of that <laughs> is God might be working through you. You know, when you have that, I would say that's a nudge from the Holy Spirit when you say like, you know what, How, how's... How's Mika doing? How's, I wonder how Rodney's doing. I, I wonder how Veronica's doing. I wonder how Vicky's doing. You know, right. that could be God saying like, the reason why you're thinking this is because I'm trying right. to send you. I'm <laughs> trying to be beside my sister and brother in Christ. And it might be you, you know, who's just the text, the call, the, just the check-in. Um, you know, that, that could be God at work. And, and for us to be sensitive to that as well. Yes, yes, I agree with you. It's so important to know that um, that God uses people, and those people are you too. Mm -hmm. um, it is good to have people bless you, and it's good to be able to bless others. Mm -hmm. And this is a tough season. You know, not only are we in um, in a pandemic season, but we're also in winter. And then we're also in holidays. And these holidays have a lot more attached to it than just food. So um, oh, yes. uh, uh, be connected with each other. Um, and and if, if, uh, if, if you, oh, so besides the Lord, like um, putting it in my brain saying, um, hey, man, how's Sergio? Maybe you should just holler at him real quick. Maybe um, the Lord is also saying, um, me and i'm feeling in a very dark place maybe it's like man i know who really blesses my soul let me reach out to that person mm. so uh i know that uh a lot of us feel like we we could reach out and i believe that but also we could reach out if we need help too so mm. i want to encourage you in that way as well amen well i i mean we we're, we're we already shot our 10 minutes and uh oh, for our okay. discussion time and i feel like this is a topic that i could talk uh for a while um what i would just mm -hmm. encourage you at home is is read psalms 23 especially in this season right now 
of, you know, if, if you're having difficulty to really listen to Pastor Mika's sermon again um, and just kind of walk through it um, just to, to give you some hope and, and just some, some reflection on it as well. Um, I, currently through COVID, the thing that I have found a blessing that I have heard from other people is like, I've just started to read scripture because I don't really know what else to do. Praise <laughs> the Lord. I have been in scripture more. I, you know, like I said, I started two groups during COVID. So I've been even reading scripture more than I already was. And it's just, man, it's just balm for my soul. It's just, there's so much in there. Galatians, even Hosea, which is crazy. I'm reading Hosea and just, there's so much blessings in there. So just, you know, dive into scripture. If you don't understand it, you just don't understand it yet. Just keep at it. Give us, give us a holler.